Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the workshop. And today we're gonna build something. In fact, it's actually a response to some of your questions. So a while back I made this right here. I call it the tiny jar of fuzz. It's a fuzz pedal inside of a jar. And that's been a fairly popular video for me. But the most common question that I've gotten on that video is people say, hey, either how do I add a foot switch or I've gotten a couple questions where people say, I tried to add a switch, how do I make it work? And I've always tried to explain this via comments and it's not the easiest. So today I'm just gonna do a video to show you how you add a foot switch, or it doesn't even have to be a foot switch as I'm gonna show you today, but how you add a switch to an effect that doesn't already have a switch. It'll work with this, it'll work with any of the little boards that you buy pre-built from Amazon or a kit that you buy that doesn't include all the stuff to hook up the foot switch. My friend Steve, I actually um, reviewed a guitar that he made a while back, actually it was one that he made for Shane Spiel. And he saw this video of mine and he was like, hey, I'm gonna build that on my channel. So he went out and bought the parts to build it and then he said he got intimidated. So he just ended up giving it to me when he brought that guitar for me to check out. He brought these along too and he said, you know what, I'll never get around to building this thing. Why don't you just build it? So he gave these to me. So here's the thing. He also gave me this little cigar box as well to house it in because he said he was going to do this in this cigar box. So I'm going to build it and I'm just going to give it to Steve. And he doesn't know that but by the time you see this video, he'll already have it. So surprise. Anyway, first things first, I got to build this circuit and then I can show you how to do the switch. Okay, so here is our completed circuit and it's basically ready to go. Now this is more or less the same circuit that I made last time. You can see all the little components here on the pot, but you see there's a lot more loose wires. And the reason for that is normally these two wires would go together to this jack, right? And then these two wires, this one and this one would go together to this jack. And so you wouldn't have those loose wires. And then I also have an extra power wire coming here from the battery and an extra ground wire coming here from the common ground. And that's what those, the power and the ground are gonna allow us to hook up an LED. Okay, now when people start talking about switches, you see switches like this, 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 all kinds of different switches, right? Like how do I know what I need? Okay, to do a standard effect, you need a triple pole dual throw switch or 3PDT as it's often called. So that's what this is. This is a 3PD switch, 3 PDT switch. So is this. This is a foot switch. This is a toggle switch. These are both 3 PDT switches. So either one of these would work. The difference is this one you, of course, push to turn on and off. And this one you just flip the little toggle to turn on and off. So what does that actually mean? Well, let's start with our single pole dual throw. So if we look here, there are three things, right? There are three little prongs on the switch and then there's the switch has two positions. So right now it's in the down position, which means these top two prongs are connected together. Now it's in the up position, which means these bottom two prongs are connected together. So you could send a signal into here and then send it to two different destinations or you could have a ground coming in and you could ground two different circuits to turn them on or off or whatever you wanna do, but that's how it works. Well, a dual pull dual throw is just two of these next to each other. So when you're in this, this up position, these two and these two, so there's four down here, right? These two are hooked together, these two are hooked together. When you're in the other position, these two and these two are hooked together. Now they aren't hooked to each other, it's just these two are hooked together, these two are hooked together, but they aren't hooked together across. Well, you guessed it, the triple pull dual throw is just three next to each other. So why would we need three switches to wire up an effect? Isn't it just one thing? Well, that's true. But what you have, keep in mind, you have an input and you have an output, okay, from the jack, and then you have an input and an output to the effect. So if it's in the on position, what you want is that audio to come from your input jack, go to the switch, then go up to the pedal, then come out of the pedal, and then go to the output jack. But if it's in the off position, you just want that input jack co connected directly to the output jack. Okay, so there's your two positions. But wait, we've got a whole nother set of poles, so what is that for? That's for the LED. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this. These eight diagrams here are all common ways that people wire up these uh, 
triple pull dual throw switches to be an effects bypass. Uh, I'm gonna use this one up here in the corner, but any one of these will work. You'll see that we have a ground going to the center. We have the ground from our LED going to the top center lug, okay? And so when that is in the in the on position, that LED is on. Then when it's in the off position, that LED circuit is broken. And we're gonna see that the effect gets sent to ground. That's so it doesn't use any power. You don't have to do that, that's optional. But I like to do that so it doesn't use any power when the switch is in the off position. So one other thing I forgot to say, in addition to your three PDT switch, you're also gonna need a current limiting resistor. This is a 4K7 resistor or a 4700 kilo ohm resistor. Um, that will work. You could use a 1K, you could use a 10K. It's really about how bright you want the LED to be, but 4K7 seems to be a good like de facto. And then of course I've got a small LED here. So we're gonna use this and this to hook up the LED. This will be our switch. The rest of the wires are on the effect. Let's get it put in. step is going to be to get it into the box. Now, if you look at the size of this box that Steve picked out, it will easily fit in this box, right? Like that's, that's not even hard to do. But here's the problem with that. This is a sliding lid box. So I can't just mount everything in here. I mean, I could, I could put like everything around the sides and then just slide the lid in. But I'm thinking I want the volume knob up here on the top because that seems like the right place for it. So I'm thinking if I mount input and output jack on the sides, maybe switch in the LED up here and mount the pot here. But the thing is, you know, you have to slide this in before you can put the pot in there. So you gotta slide it in far enough to get to your hole. I don't know. This might be, this might be a bit of, a, of an adventure, but let's give it a shot. Okay, there we go, I think it's complete. We've got our volume knob here, in and out jacks, We've got our power switch and our LED. Um, obviously I don't have a battery in it yet, so the LED didn't come on. But I just realized something after I got it all together. You can slide this up that far and that'll give you enough room to put the battery in and out. But where is the battery gonna go? I guess it'll have to go either here or here. So let me rig something up for that. So if you look over here now, you see this little piece of Velcro. And then if I slide this up here, you can see there's a little piece of Velcro that goes around there so you can get access to the battery and change it and everything. And it clears, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it does clear the jack with a little bit of space to spare. So I think this is going to work. I guess the next thing to do is plug it in. Okay, howdy folks, I am back in the air conditioning and boy, does it feel good today because it is hot out there. Now I grabbed this cigar box guitar. Steve actually made this cigar box guitar for me. So I figured it was appropriate cigar box guitar. I'm making a cigar box effect for Steve. I don't know, it just seemed like a good symbionts to have. Okay, so we've got the input and the output plugged into the box. By the way, you can see here, I did an I there for input with my wood burner and an O there for output also with my wood burner. I did not expect that the finish on the box was going to sort of flare up like that. So it makes the O and the I kind of hard to read, but you can definitely tell that's the in and that's the out. Um, also, one other thing, if you look here, the A in the logo is basically like the indicator. So if I have it all the way to the left, you can see the A is lined up with the zero as I turn it up. Um, the A kind of is the indicator. Now I found with these, typically between two and three is enough. So I'm gonna put it there for starters and we should be good. Now, obviously the LED is off and the jack is in the down position. So right now, despite the fact that we don't have it on, if I play the guitar here, we should hear sound. So let's go ahead and flip the effect on. So when I do that, we should see the light come on. Indeed we do. And we hear a little uh, buzz there because it is adding some gain. All right, 
so it definitely works. So there you go. So if you are one of the people that asked the question on that previous video about how come I can't just add a switch or why is it hard to add a switch, there's the answer. It's actually several steps because realistically it's three switches in one switch. That way you can make it work. There's your answer. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you like what I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, just give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.